to you guys and ladies and uh, from uh, East Coast to West Coast. Um, I, I went to the dentist this morning and had a teeth, or not a teeth, I had a tooth filled. Um, and so I still have a little bit of a fat lip, but we'll try to get around that. So we will talk a little bit about the um, the IDP today. Uh, IDP basically means that it's an inverter ducted package. Uh, all of the uh, benefits and features and economics that the 2.0 IDS unit uh, gives us. Uh, now we have all of those uh, in in a box. And so we're going to learn a little bit about that particular box and how we install that and uh, how we're how we're looking at it. Uh, so uh, we've had the five ton IDP um, six, seven months, something like that. And uh, I've got uh, uh, recent uh, pictures of the three ton being installed. So the three ton has uh, hit the ground. Here in the United States, everybody was uh, cheering uh, that on type scenario, and we've actually uh, had a, a company in the Southern California area that's actually uh, have uh, set two of the three ton units. So on the uh, on the five ton, uh, you'll see that we have uh, a 19 sear piece of equipment, and in that 19 sear uh, unit uh, comes with a 10 HSPF 12.5 EER. Uh, that uh, calculates to the 19 sear on the three ton, a little bit different. 18.5 sear, uh, 9F989 HSPF 12 EER, and then there's the 18.5. Uh, so looking at the uh, box in general, you you may not be able to tell between the five and the three. Uh, similar, very very similar to uh, configurations in size. And of course, the looks as far as that. So when you're looking at this uh, this unit, you'll see the the uh, the coils on the top. It is discharge type. Each one of these uh, condensers uh, have a 10 speed condenser fan motor uh, that move the air throughout the uh, condenser coil. So let's talk a little bit about some uh, unique selling points: Bosch quality, premium comfort. Again, all of that. Uh, logic that's built into the board, built into the IDS2, uh, the compressor, the components, uh, the logic that we're looking at uh, with a 47 degree uh, coil in the summertime, 107 degree coil in the wintertime, all of that logic, that comfort that we're being basically load matching the compressor to match your comfort needs inside is in this package unit. Uh, minimum in, uh, energy use, again, we're looking at uh, very, very low, uh, probably uh, less than the 1.5 amp draw every time we start up with this particular machine. Looking at a target amp of the three ton, somewhere around uh, lower than the uh, the 10 mark, and basically a red flag of amp draw on the three ton being at 15. Uh, the target amp on the five ton, uh, would be somewhere around the 14.5, 14.7 mark, um, and then red flagging at uh, 20 amps. So uh, very, very low minimum, uh, very, very low energy use of this particular machine. Contract friendly, uh, we're looking at uh, the capability of a vertical and a horizontal discharge. Um, uh, we found out uh, through the new shipment that uh, uh, your concerns about how they were shipped were answered, and the panels are now coming on the uh, horizontal discharge and, and return side instead of the downshot, which would be the... So um, that that is a change of how they're being shipped to you. We found out that this week. Some more un, uh, unique selling points. So look, look what I've done. I, I did the Bosch quality twice. I, I you know, not not sorry. Um, it it is a Medea product, uh, and we have taken our concerns and our needs off of uh, what you guys need as a package unit, and we have asked Medea to uh, uh, 
a riot, a package unit that uh, that is conducive for the Bosch name and for your your customers and things. Um, the enhanced dehumidification um, uh, capable of uh, slowing that fan speed down to the lowest denominator, bringing on that compressor at a very low uh, Hertz rating and therefore allowing us to actually uh, go below our set points of logic and uh, ringing out that humidity that might be uh, in, in the structure, uh, enhancing uh, the comfort level. Uh, best market in um, the efficiency, it is the, the greatest uh, efficient piece of the, uh, equipment out there today. Uh, again, as, as a package heat pump, uh, we, we have enjoyed the inverter technology now for four or five years with the IDS product. And we're we're very excited about this particular um, technology being in a box type thing. So when we're looking at uh, the compressor, and we say that it is in a variated compressor, we're looking at a a single phase uh, machine that is now going to take that single phase, that L1 and L2 voltage. Uh, run it through the board, do what we would call the magic, taking it to a compressor, and that compressor is going to variate its uh, capacity, um, ramping up and down, if you don't mind. And in this particular case, basically from a 36% ratio all the way up to 118% uh, ratio. Uh, so it's a capacity-driven inverter machine. Uh, the IDP, uh, five ton, uh, we're going to allow uh, basically a two-stage fan motor. Uh, that control can be, or that that uh, that setting basically is a Y1, Y2 uh, control from a thermostat setting. So you would need to have a controller that was conducive for that Y1, Y2. On the ID3, uh, IDP3, it's, it's a little bit different in that the logic now has changed. And we, we are now capable of utilizing uh, four of those five fan speeds uh, that the, uh, the indoor blower motor has available. And you literally could use a, um, a, you could use a toggle switch if inside if you wanted to, or a single stage thermostat. What I'm talking about is an old style uh, thermostat and still have the availability of a four stage fan control. So what we're doing with that is, is not only the temperature differential from the return air to the discharge air, but also the run times between Y1 and Y2. Um, whether we're in the heating mode or cooling mode, we're able to look at those variating that fan speed uh, accordingly uh, type thing. And then the, the next part about the ID3 uh, would be that we would be capable of uh, diminishing the logic of SW44, which is our temperature logic. Uh, and we can go from a 47 degree coil to a 42 degree coil. But if we uh, use the DHUM mode, that 47 would go to 45, that 42 would go to a 40 degree coil, um, allowing us to uh, have that differential of two degrees, slowing the fan down uh, to its lowest denominator, and then, of course, be in the dehumidification mode. So that thermostat that you're going to want on the IDP3, uh, you would you would want to have a, a uh, humidif uh, type of scenario. BCC 100 uh, works really well in, in that particular case. So um, we all know that the the inverter technology has uh, the quietest uh, uh, condensing unit and the quietest uh, uh, sound to it, uh, or lack of sound actually uh, in the industry. So the the, the five ton uh, BRB that is the uh, the model number of the uh, the, the IDP. Uh, basically, you're looking at a height of 51 inches. You're looking at a width of 44 plus and a length of 51 plus. So uh, it, it, this machine is all what we would call all there. Uh, the supply and return, whether we are vertically or horizontally uh, coming away from that unit with the supply and return, uh, the ductwork is the same. It is 14 inches by 16 inches. Uh, minimum breaker on the five ton is 41.9. Maximum breaker without electric heat strips. 
So we're not we're not allowing uh, we're not putting in any heat strips with this these particular numbers because the heat strip packages would be filled installed with their own uh, amp usage uh, and wire sizing coming to each one of those whether it's a five kW or a twenty kW. So when we say that the maximum breaker for the five ton unit uh, without heat strips is that uh, had a had a um, reply a question the other day about a retrofit install so when i'm taking away a gas pack unit putting in this particular heat pump got to remember that the gas pack uh, use gas for heat um, so we are probably wanting to look at an upgrade of the electrical panel upgrade of the disconnect um, if i am going to be installing some heat strips if I'm not going to have the heat strips, then chances are the breaker that might have been with the original unit might be the same and be uh, uh, conducive for the new install of the, of the piece of equipment. So uh, you need to make sure about that when we're doing a retrofit uh, change out in a gas pack type scenario. On the five ton, we're looking at the CFM of greater than 1300, less than 1800 CFM. So uh, you, you've got to uh, uh, look at that particular numbers uh, and, and uh, uh, that those are the ranges with the, uh, the CFM. Stat wires uh, very, very easily hooked up basically uh, to a terminal block. Still using uh, your four wires, uh, what we would use to uh, the the uh, the old uh, IDS unit, but you're also now going to be bringing in wires coming from the thermostat to what we would call the air handler. So you're you're going to run more than four wires, and it's probably going to be a six or an eight conductor, depending on how many uh, electric heat strips you have and how you're going to economically hook those up. Uh, when we're looking at the the uh, the five ton, uh, we're looking, of course, at the 12.5 EER, 19 SEER, and 3.8 COP. So uh, very, very good numbers, uh, Energy Star rated type type numbers uh, ready to, to go for your customer. Uh, the heat strips that I'm going to be capable of putting into this machine has my, my full range of accessories of heat strips. So from the 5 kW to the 20 kW can be installed in into the the IDP5. Gross weight just right around the 600 pound mark. On the three ton, a little bit different. Uh, height is 46. What the width is 35. The length is 50. The gross weight uh, drops a little bit to right around the 480 mark. Uh, supply and return vertical and horizontal. Again, both of them are the same uh, uh, dimensions as far as uh, the supply and return, and they're 10 by 16. Notice that the CFM is greater than 950, but less than 1250. And then I put into green uh, print because I think you guys are going to be capable of making a lot of money with this particular machine when we are capable of hooking it into some uh, duct work for high static, which would be a manufactured home, a trailer house, things like that. So remember that the three ton, the IDP3 is trailer house approved. The ID5, the IDP5 is not. So three ton, yes. Five ton, not yet. On the minimum breaker size on the three ton is 28.7. Maximum breaker size is 45. Again, those were, were without the heat strips. Snap wires on this one is going to be hooked up to the uh, blower board. You'll see pictures of that here in just a little bit. When we're looking at the um, the the CFM uh, off the five ton and the three ton, we're looking at these numbers that the static pressure of your ductwork is going to range. They're all the way up to the 0.8. And the taps here are from the indoor blower motor or on your left hand side, the three ton and the five ton uh, in, in the tonnage of equipment. And, and remember that we're going to stay outside the black box. So whatever numbers we need per tap is going to be outside those blackened uh, boxes, please.
some of the components that they have in common, same cabinet design. So that condenser uh, coil is on the top. Those panels can be fairly easy removed for cleaning and inspection and that kind of thing. Uh, they are a double row style coil. Uh, so they are very easy to see if they are uh, dirty. They're also very uh, protected from hailstones like we received in Oklahoma last night. So uh, very, uh, very, again, uh, protected back there, but yet uh, durable and also capable of being uh, cleaned. If I am running a water hose on them to clean them and stuff, I am going to make sure that all the panels below them are going to be uh, put back on and secured uh, with all the screws so that the water doesn't get into the electrical components, things like that. So um, again, both of these units uh, in the air conditioning mode can go down to uh, 23 degrees. So anything above 23 degrees outside ambient temperature Fahrenheit, I can run these units as an air conditioner all the way up to about a 125 mark heat mode is in the heating mode, I can run this as a heat pump to the outdoor ambient temperature of uh, below 86, and I can be a heat pump down to four degrees, minus four degrees Fahrenheit. So uh, very, very good numbers, wide range of operation at that point in time. There is nothing that I can do or put on or add to uh, this, this machine at this point in time to make it go below uh, the 23 in the air conditioning mode. Uh, on the 14A refrigerant, these these uh, these units are factory charged. We would never want you to put your gauges on this unit just for in a maintenance type scenario. We're going to ask you to um, basically what I would always say in class is sit on a bucket, push a button, uh, take the numbers down and, and react accordingly and things. So the 510 unit comes with 12 pounds and nine ounces uh, factory charged. The three ton comes with seven pounds and eight ounces factory charge. All of the buttons and the functionality of the control board that we saw on the IDS 2.0 are in this unit. So um, the the differential between the 1.0 and the 2.0 are, 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 is, is a fact now. There are some differentials. There are some things that the 2.0 does for us as a as an installer, as a maintenance guy, um, that the 1.0 did not do, but everything that the 2.0 uh, gives us, uh, the logic, the board, the, the functionality is in this uh, these two package units. Same residential war uh, warranty, 10 year parts, 90 day labor allowance, uh, if you're going to put this in a light commercial application, that warranty changes uh, from the 10 to a 3, uh, and you get a one-year parts uh, warranty on that particular unit. So uh, with the voltage coming into this machine, again, same voltage as we would see in the 2.0, where the voltage needs and has to stay below the 270 mark. So that 270 is my max, and the 172 is my minimum. So anywhere from 172 to 270, uh, my machine L1 and L2 uh, will work properly. Remember that my machine is a single phase product only. Um, we still recommend a surge protector, a line voltage type of monitor. We're, we're still asking you to field install these. Um, are you going to lose your warranty if you don't? Uh, no, uh, but if you're calling me this afternoon on something that does not have a surge protector, uh, you may get scolded a little bit if, uh, if you don't mind. Uh, we do recommend the surge protector. Uh, again, that 10 speed fan motor is a condenser fan motor. We change that fan speed not on air drive or air temperature. We change it on a liquid line T3 sensor and basically looking at a 100 degree mark versus an 86 degree mark. So uh, when our liquid line would fall below the 86 mark, we would change uh, speeds. When we went above that 100 mark, we would change speeds uh, to a higher, a higher uh, number. Um, monitoring that every, about every 20 seconds uh, in the air conditioning mode, in the heating mode, it's a little bit different looking at the T3 again, but also looking at what we can do capacity-wise uh, through that compressor. So 
um, we we monitor and variate that fan speed accordingly that way. So on the on the indoor fan control, again, we have that two stage fan control uh, blower motor ready for you to have that Y1 and Y2 thermostat uh, with the the five ton. Uh, with the three ton, you could uh, upstage your 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 uh, controller uh, to have different types of Y1, Y2, W1, W2 type control fan speeds and things. But if you had a single stage thermostat, we're still going to work the same way. One of the other things that the the uh, three ton has is our uh, same type of anti-code blow uh, device that the BVA 2.0 has. So my thermostat comes on in the heat mode, my compressor comes on, but my fan, my indoor fan motor will not blow that cold air that's been sitting in the ductwork until that coil, that indoor coil uh, is warmed up by the refrigerant and then the fan comes on. So uh, a delay at that point in time on the three ton, very, very unique uh, situation uh, needed to be done for a very long period of time. Um, so we, uh, that's, it's just a, it's just a great item that is uh, now a uh, factory installed uh, device that is, is inside this box. Um, one of the, the, uh, the items that the three ton has is that sensor that basically, um, uh, will eliminate, uh, that other thermostat setting. So again, if you, if you had, uh, uh, that single point thermostat, we would be able to work with that with the three ton system. There is the board that we have been um, accustomed to. All of the features and benefits of that board, all of the functionality of that board, all the safety features uh, and the characteristics are inside this, uh, the IDP product. So again, the, the unit is working just like the IDS unit in that we are a B activated reversing valve. We energize in the heat mode. Uh, somebody asked how come uh, we do that. My, uh, bad, my bad response to that would be how come the other people don't do that? Um, we will, we will uh, very, very easily uh, shift that reversing valve um, we always uh, have a tendency to change the reversing valve, whether we are in a defrost mechanism or coming out of a defrost mechanism when we're at a very low Hertz rating. So we never hard shift the reversing valve like other manufacturers do. I, I personally think that, that there uh, will never be a reversing valve change out um, due to a slamming a, uh, a slide inside that reversing valve because of a hard shift. So B activated reversing valve is, is what we have. We still have that SW2 force button uh, where you can force my unit into a 100% operation. Uh, you can force it into a manual defrost in the winter time. Uh, you get to sit on that bucket and, and do that particular item with the SW2. The SW3 is the check button. Uh, that's that parameter button. Uh, you're basically looking at uh, anywhere from uh, 25 different parameters, whether it be incoming uh, voltage, uh, your L1 and L2, incoming voltage with your, your, uh, your control voltage, uh, how many minutes did that compressor run, uh, what's my coil temperature? What's the coil pressure? Uh, what was the last fault code? Uh, all of those things with that parameter check button. Uh, if you don't, uh, if you don't know or you don't remember, we added about seven of those parameters from the IDS one. So what we uh, what we now have on this particular board. Um, is a very, very unique situation in that, again, to even to check subcooling on this machine, you do not need your gauges. Uh, we still have J2. That J2 is that capacity switch that you could literally take this three ton unit and switch it and, and basically what, what I say is cut the top end off of the, off of the unit and make it a two ton system or you could do that same thing with the five ton, making it a four ton system. My question always is to you, if I load match your capacity 
and I can do that load matching automatically, why would you want to cut me off if I have a greater big, if I have a greater amount of a sponge sitting out there ready to work for you and you're wanting to eliminate some of that sponge. So in a, in a situation that is very, very unique would be the only time that we would deregulate this, this machine in that particular scenario with the J2. And then somebody says, well, Fred, how come, how come you guys have the J2 switch in the first place? Um, I, it is it is one of those things that we're we're going to get a HRI numbers on the two ton. Therefore, we have to deregulate it. Same thing with the with the uh, the four ton. So the J two will probably always be there, um, maybe just to confuse us. But again, two pushes on. I'm sorry, one push on the uh, the parameter uh, switch that SW three tells me what uh, calculation J2 is in. So it would it would actually say uh, zero, zero, then when to say an H, and then it's going to give you your capacity that J2 is located in. If that if that capacity is not what you want, if you want a five ton and, and somebody flipped it for you and it was a four ton, maybe they don't work for you anymore, uh, that particular switch uh, needs to be uh, manipulated. So. Remember that anytime you manipulate one of my switches, you turn the power off, let the board go black, the display go black, flip the switch, turn the power back on. When you're turning the power back on, there is going to be about a five and a half minute time delay on the board. So it has nothing to do with the low voltage time delay. It's always the L1 and L2 time delay built into the board. Uh, there's nothing you can speed it up. It's just that that way. So. Um, sit on the bucket and wait a little bit. So SW44 is that switch that I get to manipulate, uh, change the capacity, the logic of my 47 degree coil in the summertime to 42. I get to uh, maybe uh, have a have a, a lower uh, coil temperature. Somebody asked me, said, "Well, Fred, if I flip that switch, does do I mess with the economics of the uh, the structure?" And absolutely. I mean, we're going to ramp up this compressor and use more wattage to get to that particular number. Then we're going to affect the the uh, the people's electric bill. How much? Don't know. But they didn't. I've never had anybody uh, flip that switch and tell me later on that they couldn't afford their electric bill. They they we flipped that switch to make them more comfortable. So again, I I call these switch callback switches. Uh, leave them alone until somebody calls and says that they were uncomfortable uh, type thing. So again, the SW44 is that switch that we can change the logic of our indoor coil. SW5 is my defrost switch. Um, leave it alone if you don't need it, but if you need to, you can uh, allow that defrost to come on basically 10% earlier than what it's supposed to and, base, and have a one more minute uh, run time during that defrost uh, situation. So fault codes are the same. Uh, we still get the fault codes. We still have those, uh, uh, that board will tell us the last fault code uh, uh, that the system has done for us. Still have all of the sensors on on all of the, uh, the refrigeration uh, that we need and taking a look at things going on. That's how we communicate back and forth. So uh, same compressor that the 2.0 has in it, uh, that GMCC compressor, uh, that that uh, compressor that's manufactured by the largest uh, compressor company in the world. The IDP5, that two stage fan motor. Uh, that is controlled by Y1, Y2. The ID3 has a four-stage fan motor controlled by the differential of temperatures between the return and the supply. Uh, dehumidification, uh, the ID5 will downstage to the low uh, of the speed of the compressor with the DH from the thermostat. And uh, the, uh, the board actually looks at what we chose on SW44 and drops two degrees below those set points. So if we had chose uh, the default and it was 47, it would drop to 45. If we chose SW44 to be a 42 degree coil inside, it, that number would be 40 now. The high static certification, the five ton does not have it at this time. 
uh, are we working on it? Sure, we would we would love to be able to uh, allow you to uh, set this five ten unit on a on a, a manufactured home or a trailer house type scenario. You bet. But the ID three uh, does have the high static mobile home uh, uh, certification at this point in time. So. Um, when we're looking at the operational range again, the the 2.0 and the and the IDP uh, have the same uh, low uh, number on the uh, heat side. Remember that the 2.0 IDS can go down to 15 degrees, where the IDP in the cooling mode stops at 23. Uh, so a little bit little bit differential at that point in time um, on on the operational range. So uh, again, both of these uh, units are Energy Star rated. Uh, looking at the model number there in, in the, the left-hand side, the total capacity of what the system can give us in the summertime, the EERs, the SEER rating, and then the heating capacity. And then the right-hand side shows us the differential or the range of the CFM that we have the the uh, the range on uh, some people ask me say well Fred on the uh, the IDS one I could take that five ton and and basically put it into a three ton situation three tons of ductwork three tons of air you'll notice real quickly that my five ton IDP does not go down to that far so uh, you're really realistically looking at the lowest uh, CFM range of 1300. Uh, kind of calculates to about a three and a half ton on the low range of the IDP uh, five. So be very careful and mindful of that particular uh, scenario in your retrofit uh, uh, or even even in a uh, a new install. So we're we're looking at a picture of an install. Want you to take a a look at the old unit that is coming off of the roof, and of course the new IDP that's uh, and installed on the roof. Um, left and right, pretty much the same. Front and back, pretty much the same. Uh, but look at the height differential. So uh, the reason that we have that uh, 19 serrated uh, unit is uh, coil space inside the box. And we we do that. We try. We we worked really hard to keep the same footprint as the the uh, the old units. What we would call the small footprint of a package unit, so it would fit hopefully on that curb, hopefully on on a retrofit application uh, where there wasn't a whole lot of field uh, um, um, oh, uh, fixing and trying to make make work. We try to keep that footprint the same. So, but it is a little bit taller than the normal unit. Works really well with my BCC 100 and the, its little brother, the BCC 50. My thermostat uh, is going to, if you're your thermostat on, on this machine, you're going to make sure that the cycles per hour at, at its lowest uh, denominator, you're going to make sure that that the maybe the thinking process of that thermostat uh, that's sitting on the wall uh, is uh, backed away from from that. We my board is a brain and sometimes two brains do not work well together. So uh, be very careful about that particular scenario, trying to uh, utilize my machine with somebody else's thinking thermostat. Uh, also be very careful about programming thermostats in, in that kind of scenario. So uh, realistically, the, the, um, a very simple thermostat um, works really well with this machine. And of course, we're always trying to, to push the BCC 100 and the BCC 50. So a couple of pictures of, of the uh, of the machine. When I looked at this machine for the very first time and took the panels off as an old contractor, I was very pleased with with uh, the the system and how it was laid out and the accessibility that I didn't have to remove something to get to something else. Very very easy to to look at. Very very easy to get to. Whether it was the uh, the reversing valve and the accumulator and all of the little things or the refrigeration things were basically behind one panel, remove it, and there they were. Uh, compressor, service valves, 
Again, um, I, I tried really hard for these service valves to be inside the cabinet, not sticking outside the cabinet, because I don't want you putting your gauges on my unit. I wish that they were hidden, but I didn't get that done. Maybe maybe next time, maybe in the 2.0 package unit. Um, looking at the, uh, the the back view or where the ductwork is coming out, remember that is it is going to come to you with the covers on this these particular holes uh, before it came to you with the covers on the on the bottom. Now they're going to come with the covers on that. So if you're going to utilize these and need these, you're going to take the covers off and replace them uh, basically almost screw hole for screw hole uh, into the bottom part of the uh, exposing the, the openings and things. So discharge on the left, return on the right. If you're looking at this, I, I like to tell people that if, I, if I'm trying to remember which one was on the right, whether it was a discharge or the return, uh, if I'm looking at this unit, uh, return means right, and there's your two R's that we can put together. So the return is on the right-hand side of this machine. And so I'm looking at the front view. There's the control panel. The control panel is in its own little isolation uh, waterproof type uh, box. Uh, you've got the blower motor in the middle, and you've got your electrical panel on the right-hand side. Uh, notice that the heat slots back there uh, ready for you to put heat strips in yourself if you need those uh, type uh, things. So remember that on the three ton, the only heat strip package that I cannot use is the 20 kW. So the five ton can use all the gamut of the heat strips accessories. The three ton cannot use the 20 kW just because I don't have enough air volume to push the air through those 20 kW heat strips. A control panel on the five ton. You've got your L1 and L2 coming in. You've got your grounds hooked up uh, there. Uh, you've got your low voltage uh, coming into basically a terminal block. Thermostat wires uh, do need uh, solid conductor thermostat wires for, for this particular unit. Again, there is your uh, model number and your refrigerant charge 12.9 on the 578 on the 3 ton. Uh, you bet. We're looking for uh, subcooling in, in my machine uh, where we basically say 12, uh, but that 12 allows us and you also to have a plus or minus 4 degrees on that particular 12. Thermostats, uh, very, very, uh, again, very, very simple. Uh, the simpler, the better type scenario. Depending on your heat strips and how you're going to want to economically bring those on, depending on how many wires and how, how what you're going to be hooking those up to. Some of the questions that uh, we 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 get is that uh, what's the difference between a package unit and a split system? The split system has the capability of refrigerant lines being able to separate the indoor and the outdoor section. On the IDS one, it was 100 feet. On the IDS two, it's 150 feet. Now I get all of that all of that stuff in a box. So that's the difference between the split and the and the package unit. We are not a gas pack. So the gas pack is is something that uh, has the the, uh, the the fossil fuel, the propane, the natural gas running through a heat exchanger type thing, and and that is its heat source. We are a heat pump, and a heat pump is a maintainer of heat. Uh, thus, that's why we probably don't like programmable thermostats, things like that. So when will we make a package unit? Uh, let us get on the treadmill and learn how to uh, trot before you're asking us to run. So. Uh, we 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 know that you need it, and we are we are working toward that particular box. So, what accessories are available with this product? Again, the five, seven, and a half, ten, fifteen, and twenty kW heat strips. They are uh, compatible for both the three ton and the five ton if your units are bought after January the twentieth. So, are in twenty twenty. So again, uh, those particular heat strips, if you, if you need heat strips, they're, they're your type scenario. So um, ask all the time about uh, the curbs and the curb adapters. We do not have any types of curbs or curb adapters for you to purchase from us yet, nor do we have any type of a, a uh, fresh air intake economizer type thing to put on the, on the box. So um, 
just don't have it yet. Uh, if you need it, we're very, very uh, no. We know that some some applications need that. We're just not there yet as far as the, uh, that particular application goes. So again, no curbs, no frames, no fresh air, and no economizers. Ten years parts, ninety day labor. Uh, if you're going to register this product, you need to uh, make sure that you're going to register this product before the thirty days is up. Uh, so that your structure, your people, your homeowners can get the additional one-year warranty as an ABC contractor. All the parts are in uh, New Hampshire or Illinois ready to come to you if you need the parts for, for the IDP. If you're not an accredited Bosch contractor yet, that ABC contractor, that, that person that is building their, their uh, company name up into a website uh, for Mrs. Jones to find, doesn't cost you anything. You're, every time you register a product, you're building up some Bosch or some dollars uh, so that you can spend uh, yourself uh, type scenario. So um, very, very uh, good um, uh, acquisition between yourself and, and the Bosch name is to be a ABC contractor. Guys, this is a, uh, this basically concludes our training for this afternoon. Again, I, I really appreciate your, your, your being here on a Friday afternoon and hope you guys are uh, still staying safe and, and being smart about uh, all the craziness in the world. So again, thank you very much for, for your attention today.